Hi, everyone. Welcome to my session called Asynchronous Completable Future. Um, uh, by the way, how many of you are actually developing in Java here? Uh, C Sharp? I hope I will not bore you too much. Uh, I will do my best. Hi, I'm Robert. Uh, I work as a chief software architect for Crossover. I have more than a decade experience working with Java, uh, uh, working for large prestigious uh, multinational companies like IBM, Einstein Dines, ING, and Dauria Software, where I had had the chance to, uh, to manage Java's performance in ways most people never thought of. Uh, so, a completable future. Uh, it's a future that may be explicitly completed, supporting dependent functions and actions that trigger upon its completion. This is the definition by the, uh, defined by its Java uh, The completable future is actually a future, which of course represents the result of an asynchronous computation, right? but I hope that this everyone knows. And, uh, it's also a completion stage. I presume that no one seen nothing out of this. Don't worry, you don't have to. Uh, actually, I have a, a more comprehensive presentation regarding all the methods that are in there. Uh, later on, I will share that link as well. Um, and beside that, also, the completable future has quite a few methods. Actually, completion stage has like 38 methods defined, uh, but there are, of course, some relation in it. Uh, but as I said in the uh, link that I just provided, you can see their uh, more comprehensive presentation regarding that. Uh, I suppose still you can see this, but don't worry. <laughs> yeah, it is <laughs> in my in my uh, previous uh, presentation. Actually, a video after that can show you <laughs> that one, uh, which again has quite some other methods in it, but today I will not talk about this, I will talk about how to actually use it. So, uh, just a I'm a bit unsynchronized here, sorry. Uh, so the question is, uh, uh, block to block or not to block? Actually, this is the question today, and uh, the blocking methods obviously will be the do something methods, and the asynchronous methods in the completable uh, future API will be, of course, those that end in an async, as in having an executor as a parameter or without it. Um, but before going into more details, let's suppose that we would like to implement the actual HTTP client. Uh, so for doing that, we would create the client, we would create a request for it, and then we call the send method on it, obviously blocking. And as you can see, by now we are not using any completable feature. And let's go and see the version where we would want to do this call asynchronous. Uh, the, the only change that you will see mostly is that now I will receive a completable feature as a result, and instead of calling send, I will send. Uh, I will call send the same uh, The rest is pretty much the same. So, uh, what about if we would try to implement actually the synchronous method by having an already functioning asynchronous method? So obviously you would do. Uh, do something the sync and then you do a join menu. Uh, what do you think? This will work? It will. Uh, and because obviously we will call a uh, thread uh, to run on another, uh, sorry, we will call a method to run on another uh, thread and then we will join, we will wait for it. Uh, but will it work? It? Actually, if we would try to measure this, we would see that we will have quite a huge overhead. It's like 8,300 uh, 8, percentage more overhead. If we increase the 
uh, the thread power, we will see that this overhead will uh, will come down, but still we will have quite a, a, a huge overhead. Now let's try the other way around. Let's suppose we want to implement the asynchronous method by already having an already functioning synchronous method. Uh, in this case, it will look uh, like asynchronously we will call to do something running in the next picture. Uh, what do you think? Will this work? Well, before actually answering this, uh, let's suppose that we want actually to implement this uh, send method from the HTTP client. So let's suppose that the send method is fully working and then we want to implement the asynchronous way by, of course, with the complete of the future API. Then we will do a supply sync and then send uh, this uh, email. Uh, what do you think? Will this work? The answer actually is sometimes. Uh, and we will go uh, in the details of why exactly it's just sometimes. So if we uh, we do the send the sync first, but we, we will send the header, then we will send the body, then we will receive the header from the server, and then receive the body from the server. But actually, it's not receiving, actually it's a wait. So we will have to wait for it. Uh, and of course, we should do all this by not blocking it in any way. After all, we want to do an asynchronous call. Uh, so, let's see how this would work. So we have the user thread here, we supply synchronously uh, uh, the input, then we call the send from the on another thread, then we will do a wait on it, and eventually the receive thread will signal our, uh, our thread. But don't. Don't do it like this, because <coughs> if you would go in more details, you would see that these executor threads are used from a common pool, and if you are using the same common pool for sending and receiving the data, you quite often <coughs> will get in deadlocks. So for that, you should use an auxiliary thread. And actually, if you would read the manual, well, the Java doc, you will see that actually the HTTP client was built exactly like that. It used a new cache thread pool by default for executing the receiving, uh, for receiving the, the responses. And it's using a new cache thread pool, which obviously will create a new thread each time it doesn't have enough thread. Uh, well, the pro is that, well, anytime your threads are busy, you will have a new thread to execute your thing. But also, this is a downside, because every time it's busy enough, then it will create a new thread, which actually will take some resources. Uh, actually, if, you, if we are looking in the details of how it's implemented, we will see that the HTTP request us it uses around 20 threads. So, will this mean that 100 simultaneous requests will mean 2,000 threads? If we would implement it as we did, then yes. Uh, but obviously this will lead to out of memory error quite uh, quite soon. So let's do something about it and eliminate the waiting. So in our executor thread by now we have a send request, then we have an await for the receiving thread, and on the receiving thread we will have a signaling of waiting up our thread. And of course, as we are talking about uh, completable future, we will try to use uh, completable future. So now we will join on the user thread and we will complete our future on the auxiliary thread. Uh, so by now this would look like this. We have a send sync and then on the send part we have a send request, we have a join and a process response. But as we are talking about completable mm -hmm. future, we actually can change it and uh, we'll have supply <coughs> the request 
then we will apply the weighting, and then we will apply the processing of the response. But actually, we want to do this everything asynchronously, so we shouldn't do a weight in another thread. So instead, we will do then compose on it using the API that is provided by uh, by the JDK. And actually, by eliminating this weight and the weight and using the complete web feature, just by this, we increased uh, its performance by four, uh, 40%. But now, let's talk where exactly our complete web feature chain of actions will be executed. Uh, and actually, I have a quiz for it. Uh, the question is, so we have on thread one, we have a future where we have a then apply and execute foo. On thread two, we have a complete on the same future. What do you think where foo will be executed? How many of you think it's thread one? No. How many of you think it's thread two? No. How many of you think it's thread one or thread two? <laughs> Quite a few. And how many things it's thread one and thread two? Good. Actually, the answer we will see in the Kahoot challenge later <laughs> on. Uh, actually, for this we have uh, two simple rules. The rules. And so the completion thread executes actions attached long enough before completion, and completion thread executes actions in completable future if already completed long enough before. But this not always works. Uh, but still, we have a light at the end of the tunnel. And uh, actually, we can have quite a good predictability. Uh, the completion thread usually uh, executes when you have a complete or complete exceptionally. On the construction thread, usually we have when you have a then apply, then compose. And of course, when you are getting the values there, you also quite often you will have there the get and join. Actually, there is a quite good presentation from a guy from Google, which goes in more deep, uh, more details in it, and will show you with the Google's tools of uh, the results of how many times runs in one thread or the other, and uh, why. But now I pretty much completed. <coughs> I uh, last time I was running a bit out of time, so now I'm prepared to be in time. Uh, any questions? Well, in that case, there will be some reference. Uh, there is the Java doc and the JDK. It's a pretty good reference for starting, and of course. By practicing, you will never, uh, you will always have good results. Thank you for listening.